Okay. So uh, we're going to do the exact same thing as we've done previously is that we're going to convert this what we have y equals to function of k a n into per worker term the only difference is now we no, no, no longer have per worker we are going to have per effective worker so y divided by a n equals to function of k divided by a n and of course a n divided by a n and so once we've simplified this, what we are going to get is y is a function of k. And over here, I'll just write this down in case some of you are confused. y is output per effective work, worker. K is capital per effective worker. Okay, so at this stage, some of you may be a little confused about the difference between A and K. So when we increase K, what that means is like the think of the example I used. Suppose in Bangladesh, k small k is 0 0.4. And if we are thinking of k as laptops, what we mean is that each worker in Bangladesh has 0 0.4 laptop. That's on average. Or we can say 40% of the people in Bangladesh have laptops. Or like two in five people in Bangladesh have laptops. That's the ratio. And then if, if the ratio goes up, this becomes 0 0.6. That's when capital is going up. We're saying previously 40% people used to have laptops in Bangladesh. Now 60% people have laptops in Bangladesh. That's when capital is improving. When technology improves, what that means is that suppose you guys were using laptops with four gigabytes of RAM now there we have upgraded that to eight gigabytes of ram so there's the ratio may still be 0 0.4 so 40 percent people used to have laptops previously and once again now 40 percent people have laptops but the difference is that these laptops are now better so that's technological advancement okay i mean if you think of hammers Okay, I mean, 40% people used to have hammers, now 60% have hammers. That's capital augmentation or capital accumulation. And in this case, 40% people still have hammers, but these hammers are now made with better material. So they do their jobs better. They're harder when you hit them at whatever you're trying to break. It's, it's more effective. So that's what technology is. And so we're going to assume two more things. Okay. I will not assume really. Uh, something we had ignored in the previous chapter is that we allowed everything to vary. So y equals to fk. And both y was changing. We saw how y would go up. And k was changing as well. But we ignored two things. One is population and one is technology. So what we are going to do here is this growth rate of population. Uh, We're going to call this GN. So suppose population is growing at 3% every year. That would mean GN would be 0 0.03 and whatever else the ratio is. And we're going to assume that growth of state of technology is GA. So the same thing, if technology is increasing 5% every year, GA is equal to 0 0.05. Once we have these two things, let's talk about steady state. 
so what we had seen in the previous chapter is that to get to steady state, what we needed was, uh, what was it, investment in capital had to be equal to depreciation. If investment was more, capital per worker was increasing. And if depreciation was more, capital per worker was de decreasing. When they were equal, we had the steady state. And that was uh, investment, which we denoted as SY, which was equal to uh, depreciation. So that was DK. Right? Now a few more things will have to happen. What has to happen is that, mm, no, wait. Uh, this isn't small k, this was big k. And now, of course, we divided all sides with n in the previous chapter. We're going to be dividing everything with a n now. And what we end up with is sy equals to delta k. We had this in the previous chapter. The only difference is now this is not per worker, this is per effective worker. I think I've said that plenty of times already. No. But the difference is we have this to, to think about now. Population growth and technology growth. Now think, if we have this, if we have this, but population, continues to increase we, we we will no longer be at the steady state because if population keeps on increasing then output per worker will be falling capital per worker will be falling uh, similarly we have assumed that technology is also changing but if technology continues to improve this relationship no longer keeps us at steady state. So the new relationship that we are going to have is this. Investment has to equal, uh, what is this? Uh, depreciation, sorry, depreciation plus GAK. Or, okay, let me write it differently. Uh, this will be easier for you guys to understand. Growth of A in. We've seen growth of A is this and growth of N is this. So growth of A in together is GA plus GN. So for example, if population is increasing by 3% and technology is increasing by 4%, Total growth of effective worker in the economy is 7%. Right. So, steady state in this model is given by investment equal to depreciation plus growth of effective worker times capital. Okay. Now, this may not be immediately obvious to you guys why this is happening. So once again, you have to sort of maybe pause the video and think for a while. And that might help. So, so you see K and K are the same here. So SY equals to delta plus GA plus GN capital. This now is the steady state requirement. The only difference is uh, this GA and GN. In the previous chapter, uh, let me write this down here. In chapter 11, steady state requirement was SY equals to delta K. In this chapter, we've added the growth rate of 
uh, uh, technology and population. So this is what we get. Okay. So next, I will I should draw the diagram. 